to my dearest friend. Once again, I am late with my letters to you. Much has happened since we last spoke, and I have been busy with many works that have floated in from across the seas, or travelled many lands to reach my ears. I find myself writing from the comfort of my bed, for the story that I have to tell you has left me wounded and unable to sit at my desk. When last you heard from me, I was attempting to find a lesson. However unsuccessful that may have been, my returning journey proved much more interesting. I took a boat from the Skelliger Isles, one that would take me back across the seas and to the safety of the Novigrad ports. However, on the day that we were to set sail, there was a terrible storm. The crew, and indeed all of us, tried to fight it, resorting to bucketing water out of the ship as it was lifted and thrown by the ocean waves. But the storm was so great that it forced our captain into docking the ship at one of the abandoned islands off the Skelligan coast. Thankfully, we managed to somehow drop anchor and find shelter on the island, taking cover in abandoned homes that sat below the ruins of an old castle. The storms continued for many hours throughout the night. It truly did piss down upon us all. But in the early morning, something woke me. The rain still sounded loudly in the air, but something else disturbed the endless rattle. It sounded like a whisper, almost like crying as if something or someone was taunting in the darkness. I decided because, of course, like the curious idiot that I am, I should go and see what this disturbance was. A part of me thought that maybe it was someone lost, but I did not wish to wake the others in case it was just my mind playing tricks on me and my imagination being overly active. I did however grab the nearest axe, just in case things were more nefarious than they seemed. Not that I could wield it, mind you, but it still seemed like a precaution worth taking. I followed my ears and wandered through the storm, closer to the ruins of the castle. It was a steep and terrible climb, but the further I went, the more I doubted that I had heard anything at all. By the time I reached the top, I had all but lost interest in what I thought I had heard, and instead I was more curious about the castle itself. I wondered who had lived there and why it had been left in such decay for so many years. The stone was so very old and seemed blackened by smoke as if a great fire had engulfed its once proud structure. Unfortunately, as I was wandering around the grounds of the castle, I slipped and fell, tearing a nasty wound in my leg. I wish I could tell you I fought off a massive, terrible beast, but sadly the truth is often disappointing. I cried out and found my balance again, annoyed that I had been so careless. I could barely stand on the wounded leg and had to wait a moment for the shock to wear away. But the pain was cut suddenly short as a shallow breath stroked the back of my neck. I am not often one terrified by the strange or unusual, but in those moments I truly thought I was to die. I turned quickly and at first I saw nothing, just the rain and the clouds of the storm bellowing down. But then a strange warmth spread over my face and I smelt the breath of something right before me. I took a step back, and as I did, the air itself seemed to shimmer, 
seemed to distort. I saw the raindrops splash against an invisible form, running down its shape. I asked what the shape wanted. By this point, my axe was already high in one hand and ready to strike with whatever strength I could muster. It told me to lower my weapon. It had a woman's voice, a calm and surreal voice. I asked it to show itself, and she must have felt truly unthreatened by my fighting stance, for not but a moment later, a blue shimmering glow engulfed her form, and she appeared right before me. Her eyes were narrowed on me, and there was a hunger to them that I did not like. I saw her teeth, fangs between her lips. I knew right then and there that she was a Bruxer, a vampire. As strange as it sounds, the panic that I felt for my own life became suddenly overwhelmed by my interest in vampires. She looked at me more and blinked, taking a step back herself. She seemed confused that I was not running away. A smile spread over her dangerous teeth and she said that she thought I would be different. I was surprised she could speak the common tongue, but it was not unknown for them to be highly intelligent creatures. I asked her what she wanted. She told me that she had been hiding aboard our ship and wanted us to continue our journey as quickly as we could. She had no intentions of harming us, but warned me that the longer we waited, the quicker she would need to feed. She wanted to keep us alive and remain undisturbed, for her stowing away was the only way off the Skelligan Isles. I had never seen a vampire, let alone spoken to one, so I did not stand around to ask her what she was doing or where she was going. The pain in my leg was returning and she seemed to become disinterested in me. I felt though for some reason that she was being truthful. She had no other reason to keep me or any of the crew alive. None of us were warriors, and she knew it well by the rusty axe I held in one hand. An iron axe, one that would not even be capable of scratching her skin, let alone wounding her. She told me to go back to the others, that the storm had passed, and that now we must make our way. Knowing that she had no reason to lie, I left back down the mountain, wanting to get back before she became hungry or impatient or simply changed her mind. We made it back to Novigrad. I did not see the vampire again for the entire voyage, nor did I know if she had made it back onto the ship. But the captain and his crew had seen to my wounds and wanted to return before any infection spread. I wondered to myself if I had somehow dreamt or imagined the entire event, but I can only wonder where the Bruxer went and if we had led her to kill or if I had played a hand in someone's death. But I have a feeling there was something different about this particular vampire, but I cannot help but feel selfish. For what if my actions have led to the death of someone less fortunate than I and the crew of the Skelligan ship? As always, I hope you find a place for this creature. Although a stranger encounter than some, it is a story worth telling and keeping tucked away between the dusty pages of one of your books. I thank you for taking the time to read this letter, I hope it finds you well, and as always, I wish you well my friend. Safe travels. <laughs>